What's up folks, this is John Hatcher with the Blues Guitar Institute and in this lesson we're going to take a look at a little known form of blues called the Piedmont Blues. Now this form of blues definitely had its heyday around the turn of the 20th century, so like 1910, 20, 30, somewhere in there, it was incredibly popular. And it was really rooted in ragtime music. So I'm going to take you through a ragtime progression right now on the guitar and get you playing it, and I hope you find this stuff as fun as I do. And what I want to do is break this down into four four bar groups. This is a 16 bar progression in the key of C. So what I want to do is take it the first four bar group, the second four bar group, third four bar group, and then finally the last four bars. So let's do that by diving into the first four bars. Alright, as I said, this is in C, so I'm going to start out with a C major chord. And I'm just going to strum through the chords. We'll add the right hand in just a second, but I really want you to just kind of hear how these chords work together. So the C, two, three, four. And what I did there was I backed down from the bass note here, the C root note. I'm backing down a half a step to the B on the fifth string, which is the second fret. Two, three, four. Into an A7. And basically I'm doing like a bar A chord but I'm putting my third finger, and you can put your second finger, whatever is comfortable for you, on the third fret of the first string. That's the seventh um, of the chord, this high note. And then, so I'm in the A7, and that gets four beats. Then I move into a D7 for two beats, which I'm playing basically your, your plain um, D7 chord, but I'm also hooking my thumb over the fretboard here and picking up this low F sharp note on the sixth string. And then I'm kind of muting out the fifth string as I do that as well because you don't want that ringing. All right, and as, as I said, that gets two beats. And then a G7 gets the other two beats of that measure. And then finally we go back to a C for an entire measure. So here's what the chords sound like without all the talking. Here we go. And I would encourage you to strum through just that simple four bar chord progression. adding any funky stuff with your right hand. We can do that later, uh, but I think it's important to really hear these chords and just hear how this melody is kind of happening in, in there. Particularly on that the high E string here, there's this melody that's just internal with this, these chord changes. Really cool to me. All right, so now we do need to add the fun part, which is the, um, the right hand or the picking hand and, and what we're doing rhythmically to really give this piece its, its life. Um, so let me play this through kind of slowly with the right hand doing what it does, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about it. Alright, now if you notice, I've got a lot of up-down strumming, but I'm also like popping the strings really percussively. And you'll hear that a lot in all different types of music. And really what I'm doing there is just locking in with the groove. There's no drummer playing with me, but if there was, the scratches would really be where the snare drum hits are going to go. It's just where it naturally feels like that pop is needed. We're going to take that same rhythm technique and move it into the second four bar group, uh, which starts out very much the same as our first four bar group. We're starting out on our C, walking down to our A7, and we're into our D7. And this is where we go a little bit different than our first four bar group. Uh, I'm going to hold this D7 for an entire measure, and then move into the G7 for an entire measure. 
So here's what the chords sound like for this four bar group. We got a C, A7, D, All right, and then when we add the rhythmic strumming. All right, and here we are, we're at the third four bar group now. And the chords are gonna be a C for an entire bar, a C7 for an entire bar, and that C7 is made just by dropping your pinky finger down on the third fret of this third string. And then an F, and then this cool chord, an F sharp diminished seven. All right, and we'll get into how to play that in a minute. But each of these chords gets four beats, so it's a bar each chord. One, two, three, four. 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 F sharp diminished seven. This is a really cool chord and it fits perfectly into this little breakdown section. Um, what I'm doing here is I have my first finger, fourth fret, fourth string. My third finger is on the fifth fret, third string. My second finger is here on the second string, fourth fret. And then I'm sneaking my pinky in here, fifth fret, first string. This shape really kind of reminds me of like your D, your regular uh, open D chord, only you're moving it to a different string set here. Instead of the top three strings, you could uh, move it to the fourth, third, and second string and just move it up, move it into place. So that's most of it. And then you're just dropping your pinky in. So while that chord is pretty tricky, it's definitely tricky to say. Um, you know, if you kind of view it as that same shape as your D, maybe you'll be able to hop into it and out of it uh, a little more confidently. Here's the rhythm behind um, this third four bar group. And then we move into the final four bars, which um, really should sound pretty familiar to you. We're gonna start back on our C walk down to our A7, then D7 for two beats, G7 two beats, and then finally C for four beats. So it's the exact same as the first four bar group. Um, so let's play the entire thing together slowly. Mm -hmm. 